Greetings, everyone. My name is William Porter. Let's get started with a prayer. Dear Lord, help us to do what you would have us to do today and give us your truth as we move into this podcast. We know that you are the truth, the life and the way, the way to enduring happiness and to eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. The uh, reason why we're here today is to talk about uh, some of the work that I've done. And I'm an author, and I write inspirational books. I write about the experiences that people have that are unusual, extraordinary, and sometimes miraculous. I've written three books to date. My first book was published in August of 2015, Life in the Spirit. It's a non-fictional work about the experiences people have in their everyday life. My second book was published in July of 2017, Heaven Can't Wait. And it's a fictional novel about relationships. And my third book is entitled Miracles in the Lives of Ordinary People. And it was published just last year in September of 2018. It's very interesting how my first book especially uh, became a reality. And I was at home with my wife one day and our daughter came in the house after working and she mentioned to us that, hey dad, hey mom, I gave out a gas on the freeway. And the first words that came to my mouth was, what? You gave out a gas? And you have to understand that, especially for your child, especially your daughter, giving out a gas on the freeway is not a good thing. But she can tell this story much better than I could. So take a look at this. So Pine, do you want to take about a minute? Fine. Too? Okay. So what had happened was, <laughs> my parents always told me not to drive on E, okay? So I learned my lesson for sure. So I'm going 440 westbound. If you're familiar with, I lived off the of six fours, focused on going to work. So 440 westbound going towards Glenwood Avenue. And you know, I don't know what it is now, but it's a tall high rise. It would, at one point was Howard Johnson's or Holiday Inn or something when I first moved here. But as you go down, for, as you um, go from Six Forks towards Glenwood Avenue, it's, there is an incline like my father spoke of, and it's like a curve. And you, uh, it's mostly traffic going to Crabtree at that point. But I get, I ran out of gas the way before that, that point. I mean, I had to have been halfway between the Glenwood Avenue exit and Six Forks. I knew I was out of gas because my car started making some funny movements. And then I look at, finally look at my gas gauge in this on E and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I can just make it to that, at the time it was a BP, it's right at the base of that high rise hotel. And so I got a long ways to go, but um, with God and his, it, it was a miracle. I was out of gas on 440. As you roll down the hill, you know, you have, it's like four or five lanes at that point. You get to a stoplight, okay? I'm out of gas. I can't stop at the stoplight because I won't be able to accelerate enough to get to the gas station. So I'm just rolling. I mean, my car is rolling and I'm praying and I'm like, okay, I'm in trouble. I wasn't supposed to drive on E. I'm late for work. So many things went through my head. Well, my car rolled. Thank God no cars were coming, but I rolled past the stoplight. It was a red light. Hope there, there are no policemen in the house. But <laughs> rolled down there, and my, I guess your 
maybe you don't know, but when you run out of gas, your steering wheel starts to lock up. Mm -hmm. So I am stirring. I did make it beyond the stoplight, made it at that parking lot. And I really, that's the guy intervention because it gets kind of flat. So my heel is gravity is not pushing me down. I said, I'm look, I'm a um, professional engineer. This, this has, this, this science needs to work for me right now. So I'm turning the steering wheel really hard to steer and I, I, I reenacted that for my father, actually. I don't think I was that close to the pump. I was a good ways away from the pump, but close enough to get the gas, to get the, um, the gas and be able to go on to work. But that's a small miracle for me, a hard lesson learned. It could have been worse. I just feel like that was, that was God. And my father loves that because he's like, I told you not to ride on E, so now you know. But that's my small miracle story. <laughs> well, that was a very interesting story that our daughter came home and gave us. And I believe now, uh, after several years uh, from the time uh, she told us that story, I believe she has never run out of gas, thank goodness, and she keeps her car filled with gas, at least half full with gas, and so she don't have that, that problem. The second book that I wrote, uh, Heaven Can't Wait, is very interesting how that book uh, got started. Uh, I belong to a networking group here in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Uh, the title of it is Right, Right, and it's a group of five to ten people who meet every month uh, for an hour, hour and a half, and talk about issues involving uh, professional writing and authorship. And this particular person came to our group uh, one morning and uh, indicated that she too would like to become an author. And of course, we accepted her into the group. She told us her story, and her story was very compelling. She mentioned the fact that she was married uh, to a service person. Uh, they had a small kid. She had just relocated to Raleigh uh, from Maryland. And uh, she indicated the fact that uh, at an earlier time, uh, she and her husband, along with the small kid, uh, had left the United States and uh, relocated to uh, the Philippines. He was de deployed in the Philippines. Uh, shortly after the time they arrived in the Philippines, uh, she indicated that uh, her husband uh, no longer wanted to be married, apparently, and he ended up uh, uh, moving away from their home in the Philippines and moving in with another woman. So obviously she was devastated. She was left alone in a foreign country with a kid uh, she uh, had to raise alone. Eventually she returned to the United States, uh, relocated to the Washington, D.C. area where they left and uh, began to establish her life there. Uh, a short time after that, she relocated to the Raleigh, North Carolina area. And uh, believe it or not, uh, a fairly short time after that, I think it was a matter of uh, months, it may have been a year or two, when the uh, husband resurfaced in fact and wanted to get back into their lives. And so anyway, she told us this story and uh, uh, during the time when the group met, after the uh, uh, group session, I uh, talked with her to get more detailed information about her story. Uh, and it was amazing the kind of thing she told me, and I ended up asking her if it was okay for me to write a novel uh, about her story. And she said yes, and, and, uh, and so that's how Heaven Can't Wait came about. It's very interesting that that was the only time that uh, the group saw that this particular person, she never uh, came to the uh, session again, and this was maybe about two and a half years ago. And there's one scripture that talks about uh, sometimes we uh, run into uh, strangers even, but they're really angels. They appear to us uh, and we're not aware of their presence. And uh, after a while, I began to think, well, why did this particular person come to this right, right meeting uh, at this particular time. And maybe, perhaps, it was because uh, I needed her story in order to uh, produce my second book, Heaven Can't Wait, or Can It? And then the third book that uh, I've 
published uh, or had published for me uh, is Miracles in the Lives of Ordinary People. And it's uh, another uh, non-fictional uh, work uh, like the first book dealing with the experiences people have that they cannot explain other than by divine influence. And it's very interesting how this book uh, came about. Take a look. The uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this frame here is actually a picture of uh, what I thought would have been my second book, uh, Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. And uh, I'll tell you the short version of this story. I uh, used the same publisher as I used uh, in the publication of my first book. I didn't see any reason why I should have used any other publisher. They did an excellent job. And uh, this was in, the uh, book was published, by the way, in August of 2015. And in much of 2016, I spent writing uh, Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People, which is another non-fictional book about true stories about people's experiences. And uh, by October of 2016, I had finished the manuscript. I sent the manuscript to uh, the publisher. They looked at it, they approved it. And there's a whole lot, of course, that goes into writing a manuscript, the editing and the proofing and all that. Anyway, uh, by the, uh, uh, the 1st of November, my publisher uh, contacted me and said that uh, everything was fine. They were going to uh, 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 print 100 copies, and, uh, but they would send me a trial copy uh, for me to review. And so they did that. And uh, it, I was really looking forward to marketing uh, miracles in the last four people and Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving holiday of 2016, Christmas 2016. Those holidays came and went. Still, no book. I did not receive my 100 copies, uh, which would have come in about five or six huge boxes on my front porch. And so constantly, every day when I came home from work, I looked on my front porch in hopes of uh, finding those uh, four or five boxes of 100 copies of Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. This did not happen over Thanksgiving, over Christmas it didn't happen. Finally, um, in January, um, and specifically uh, January 17th, I got a letter from uh, Tate Publishing indicating that they were in a, a period of transition, which meant that they had gone out of business, they had ceased publication of all work of their clients' uh, books. And uh, so I was devastated. And uh, they said that they would work with me to try to find another publisher to publish uh, Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. And so I gave them until April the 1st. And, uh, and I said, if I don't hear from them by April the 1st, I'll contact them. And I did that. And uh, I wrote them a long letter saying how displeased I was, the fact that uh, I had committed uh, time, resources, uh, to this project and did not get my product back. And, um, and so uh, they uh, indicated to me that, uh, uh, well, actually, I was able to contact the person uh, uh, and, uh, at uh, the publisher, publisher uh, publisher's house. Uh, but they indicated to me, and I had worked with this person, as a matter of fact, uh, the previous uh, 12 months uh, in working with Life and Spirit. Well, not Life and Spirit, but uh, Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. And they said they had been let go as well. So anyway, to make a long story short, uh, I was devastated. Fortunately, I was in the process of writing the manuscript for my uh, second book, uh, Heaven Can't Wait. I really anticipated this being the third book because I was thinking that Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People would have been my second book, but it wasn't because I didn't get my copies back. So anyway, uh, by uh, July of 2017, I uh, had finished the uh, uh, writing of uh, Heaven Can't Wait, which is a fictional novel about relationships. Um, and uh, so I was able to do that. And then after that, uh, going into 2018, I kind of got, got, I'd gotten over the fact that this book was not going to be published. 
And so what I did, I enhanced the manuscript of Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. I got another publisher to work with me in the publication of a revised uh, a copy of, of a revised edition of My Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. And he suggested that I change the title's name to Miracles in the Lives of Ordinary People. And so uh, this is what was produced by uh, September of 2018, this year. Uh, I finally finished uh, what I had started with Miracles in the Life of Ordinary People. So again, it's a non-fictional uh, account of people's experiences, uh, true experiences uh, in their lives. And so this is my most recent book, uh, Miracles in the Lives of Ordinary People. And again, it was a blessing in the skies because when I look back at what I would have gotten from my publisher that went out of business, it, the quality is much worse. Well, not as good, I wouldn't say yeah. worse, but it's not as good. That was a very uh, interesting situation that took place, if you can imagine it, having worked on a manuscript, anticipating that the publisher uh, will publish your book after 10, maybe uh, 12 months of work financial obligations and responsibilities, as well as the work involved, uh, and then the publisher indicating that uh, they had gone out of business. Fortunately, I was in the middle of writing uh, my uh, second book, uh, Heaven Can't Wait, and uh, I did finish that, as I said earlier, in uh, July of 2017. And um, I have a motto uh, that I use, uh, especially with respect to the books that I write, and that motto is, uh, would you like to hear or read some good news for a change? You know, there's so much bad news out there. If you look at the television newscasts, you read the newspapers, uh, you look on the computer and uh, social media, there's a lot of bad news. And one of the reasons why I wrote the books that I've written so far is because I wanted to have more inspirational material out there that people could read. And, uh, and so that's what I tried to do. In fact, uh, the, my second book, Heaven Can't Wait, there is a sequel coming very soon in about two months at the end of this summer. Uh, and it will explore the challenges that the lead character in this book, uh, whose name is Maggie, uh, some of her experiences as far as continuing to strive for her uh, heaven on earth. Uh, the Man of Her Dreams, and uh, I'm really excited about that uh, book uh, coming out. Uh, if you'd like contact information with respect to how you can get a copy of any of my books, as well as some of the other material, you can always contact me or at least uh, view my uh, website at uh, WilliamPorterLife.com. Uh, you can go there and you get all the information you care to have about what I'm doing. And speaking of one other thing, or actually a couple other things that I'm doing, I provide workshops for beginning writers and prospective authors. And so if you're interested, uh, perhaps, in writing your own book, uh, see me, uh, contact me. Uh, you can view, again, my uh, uh, web address as well as my email, waporter4995 at yahoo.com. So, uh, just keep that in mind. And what better way to keep up with your family history, for example, than by writing a book about it? Uh, I was in church uh, just this past week, and uh, we had a person in the congregation who was 101 years old. And uh, she told a group of people about uh, various experiences that she's had of course, uh, she was around earlier in the century when all kinds of things happened that we certainly would be interested in hearing about. And, uh, and so what better way uh, to document those experiences than by writing a book? Now, I'm not sure if she has that information documented or not, but we live in the present and we look to the future. And this is one thing that we can do not only uh, for say, for example, a church family, but also our personal family, to write about our histories. I don't think we have enough of that, and uh, I can certainly help you with that. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a 
or actually begin a podcast series in June where I will be actually writing my sixth book. I mentioned to you a sequel to my second book, Heaven Can't Wait, that will be out later this uh, summer. Well, actually, I've already completed the manuscript for my fifth book. That won't be out until next year, actually, in 2020. And so now I'm ready to write another manuscript, which will essentially be my sixth book. And what I plan to do is write it beginning in June, uh, plan to finish it uh, by June of 2020. And the good news is, is that you can write along with me. Find a new podcast on Saturday morning on the Every Dot Black Podcasting Network. Well, that's all for today. Remember, whatever you may be going through, just keep in mind that there's always more, more good things coming your way. We'll see you the next time.